Let's go live now to Nova Scotia, where the Premier has just announced he's stepping down. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, we had a Cabinet meeting this morning, and I'll be happy to take any questions uh, from that. Uh, but before I do that, I have a few uh, things I want to talk about. These past five months have been difficult, no question. Our province has experienced one tragedy after another, and we've seen a lot of death. Families have suffered immeasurable loss, and it is my hope that the generosity of others and the support from fellow Nova Scotians will continue to help heal broken hearts. COVID has taken its toll, and we are still not out of the woods, but we are in a much better position than we, than we were when the virus first arrived. We are in better position to prepare for a second wave. And that's because of the hard work of Nova Scotians. Your support of public health protocols and frankly of me and my government has helped Nova Scotians flatten the curve. We will open up to the rest of the country at a time and some point, and I know this will be hard. But I believe in all of you in the support, the efforts of this province and public health. I want to thank you for believing in me as your Premier. I know it hasn't always been easy. Our government has made some tough decisions in the past seven years. When I arrived in office, we had, to, we had a deficit of more than a half a billion dollars. We had to get our spending under control. So we called on Nova Scotians to rally around their province. Of course, we all remember the unions rallying around province hosts. That wasn't an easy time. We asked our public sector unions to take less, not take nothing, just take less. And they may, and they may be asked again. When we got our spending under control, we found flexibility to build programs, to grow our economy, to create jobs, and to give our young people a future. The Ivany Report and the One Nova Scotia Coalition gave us a roadmap to restructure our economy and gave us all confidence to believe that a small province could do big things. We asked the private sector to step up, to build, to grow, to spend, to hire. And we knew as a government we needed to support it that. So we created incentive programs to support businesses. The Graduate Opportunities Program helped more than 1,000 university and community college grads find their first job here at home. The Innovate to Opportunities rebate helped small business and medium-sized businesses modernize. By them spending their own money up front, they were rebated on the back end. An incentive to keep business here in Nova Scotia and to hire homegrown workforce. We also called on our universities to be part of our economic growth strategy. They became a major part of our immigration strategy, our startup community, and push enrollment to attract students from across Canada, many of whom built a life here after graduating. We also learned to be an export province. Many of our large companies were doing it, but we needed to provide support to our smaller businesses to help them gain the confidence and the expertise to sell in a global world. We managed to get control of our spending, balance our books, and reimagine our province. Our population grew to a record level. For the first time in my lifetime, the average age of Nova Scotians went down. That means more of our children are staying here and more young people from around the world are seeing a future for themselves here. Unemployment also reached an all-time low. COVID has changed all of that, but it hasn't changed what we have been learned as a province. We have proven that when we work together, we can do great things. We know we need to grow our population. We need to continue on our march to a million people. We need to continue to diversify our economy to continue to attract young people. And we need to continue to be confident in who we are and what we have to offer to build on our record success of exporting. This matters. It means that we can invest in you, the people of this province who've helped, who's help those who need it the most. It's how we were able to introduce pre-primary, give every four-year-old, no matter their economic class, a better start in life. This September, every four-year-old will have that opportunity. We were also able to increase our child tax credit, giving thousands of more families a better chance to support their children. We increased the basic personal exemption so that low-income Nova Scotians could keep more of their own money. And we also invested more than $6 million in social enterprises to provide services to Nova Scotians with diverse abilities. This investment demonstrated they matter and that Nova Scotians care. We are also spending hundreds of millions of dollars to modernize our health care infrastructure for today and for future generations. Governing is not something that I've ever taken for granted. 
It is a privilege and an honor, and most importantly, an opportunity to change people's lives. I think about the organ donation legislation. Nova Scotians will no longer be burying hope. Every Nova Scotian will be, will be a presumed donor unless they opt out, giving more people a chance at life. We've invested a million dollars in ovarian cancer for Canada, the first province in Canada to do so, to ensure that our mothers and daughters have a chance to beat this horrible disease. We are also at a critical time in our history. Black Lives Matter. Our government is working hard to right the many wrongs of the past. In this decade of people of African descent, we are trying to support African Nova Scotians who for decades lived on their own family homes but were not granted a deed. They, they didn't own their own home simply because they were black. This is wrong and our government will work hard to fix it. I am proud that our government supported the restorative process to end the hurt and begin the healing of the former residents of the Home for Colored Children, a restorative process that I believe we need to continue to support. And if we are going to change the relationship between black Nova Scotians and our institutions, if people do not see themselves reflected in our institutions, why would they feel to be part of the province? I am proud that our government appointed more black Nova Scotians to the bench than ever before. We appointed our first Mi'kmaq judge and we've reached gender parity on our courts. We added diversity at our deputies table. All of our board appointments are done with a diverse lens, gender and culture. Is that enough? No, but it's a start to a conversation that I hope will one day lead to a more open and inclusive province where African Nova Scotians feel safe and heard, where our Aboriginal community will feel part of the conversation and the solution. There is still a lot of work to do, and I believe in this province, and I believe in Nova Scotians. We may be small, but we are smart, strong, and above all, we care for one another. These past seven years as your Premier have been the most rewarding of my professional career. Being your Premier has been a privilege and an honour, something I have never taken for granted. I am grateful to my team of elected colleagues. My caucus has shown so much courage. We've made some tough decisions, but we stuck together because we believed we were doing what was right for the future of this province. Yesterday, I celebrated my 17th anniversary in elected office. Andrea, Colleen, Jeffrey and I started this journey actually in 1999. I lost my first campaign, I learned many lessons. They have sacrificed a lot for me to pursue a career in public office, and I want to thank them very much for everything that they have done. 17 years is a long time, and it's long enough. Today I'm announcing I will be stepping down and leaving public office. I have informed the party to plan for a leadership campaign, which I expect will take months. I will stay on and continue to govern, and I will be here to work with public health to keep Nova Scotians safe until the next leader is chosen. I love this job. I've enjoyed every day of it. And every day I'm inspired by the people of this province. But this is not a lifelong career. I have always believed that governing is not about power, it is about purpose. And I want to thank Nova Scotians for giving me the opportunity to be your Premier. I may not have always gotten it right, but here's what I know for sure. We are better together, and being kind matters. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have.